everybody. Welcome to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. Super, super glad you're here on this really fine Monday. I know we're getting closer to Christmas every day, and I'm just so not ready for that. But what I am ready for is talking to my dear friend, Michelle jarvis Monicut, who has written an amazing book called I Give You Permission to Grieve Your Dog. She is known as the dog psychic. She's been on the show many times, and we love having her here every single time. Welcome to the program, Michelle. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you, Kathy. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. I'm really yeah. glad you're doing well. You know, I think it's a good idea for those listeners who may not have experience uh, with you and what you do. You might want to just give people an idea of, you know, how you came to this far fabulous place of writing books and doing neat things with animals and all of that. And then we can move on further in the conversation in a bit. Sure. Absolutely. Well, um, first off, I'm um, a normal everyday human being, like as normal as we are or can be in all of the varieties of that, that you know, the, the, where that can swing from, you know, one to 10, um, zero to 60, probably for me. Um, and I've, and as a kid, I, I just knew what animals were thinking and feeling and always could kind of see and sense and feel people around me, which was, you know, the animal part was really nice. The human part was terrifying. Yeah, of course. Um, terrifying, right? Like you just are constantly just working with your brain to convince yourself that nothing's really happening and you're not really seeing things or hearing things or having these dreams, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people will recognize this as I'm, I'm saying it. They'll say, oh, I that happens for me too. Yeah. So for what sure. I did was I put away the fear and plugged in curiosity and decided at one point in my life that I had to just face it and, and learn about it. Like, what is this? What's going on for me? And so taking hundreds of classes, hundreds of courses, reading tons of books, um, working in the in, like the health food industry, different industries to just help me be able to glue all of this together in order to be able to use it to be of service. Yes. And, and then in deciding that I'm going to use these abilities, these psychic, intuitive, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognizant abilities, they all have these big fancy names, right? Ever. <laughs> yeah, those big fancy names. It just yeah. means psychic, intuitive human being. Yeah. Right. So in taking all those classes and courses, that helped me recognize and realize that this is a real benefit to the people that are going to find me, the people that are going to be attracted to me. Um, and the people that are going to show up and the animals that are going to bring them. Right. So um, starting from that basis and then building in and following everything that the following how life guides you to things like being open and trusting and winding up being a dog trainer for 20 years, which was my high school and grade school passion was being a veterinarian. Yeah. Right. So this is just a different way of being of service in the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual wellness of animals and the people that come with them and vice versa. So I was a dog trainer for 20 years and always, always would be able to figure out what was going on for the dogs that other people didn't know. They couldn't see other trainers, other people that have been working with the dogs. And I, and I would just see it. It was so clear to me. Um, so I've worked with about 7,000 dogs and was actually a dog that I worked with in LA. So I work with animals all over the world, all over the globe. Um, a dog in LA told me that I had, like, like I heard that I, for him, I had to quit being a trainer and be a voice for animals. Oh, wow. Like just be a voice, like be brave. And it was terrifying, like absolutely terrifying for me. And then in that, I have people, my old clients showing up and their dogs are now passing and they're losing their heart sense and their emotional well-being. They don't know how to navigate this. And they're, they're just having these horrible, horrible times. Um, some people suicidal about their animals in passing and asking me if there's anything I can do with them or for them or with my psychic stuff or that, you know, the quote, the stuff, you know, Michelle, and, and, and taking on that again, moving out fear and putting in curiosity and saying, okay, well, if this is showing up, it must be in my life somehow. So I'm going to say yes to it, even though I'm afraid. Yeah. So sure. now four or five, whatever this year is years later, I'm, it's what I do. It's who I am. It's how I thrive. It's how I feed my soul is being a voice for animals and their people. Yeah to self-empower them and to uncover these little 
these little secrets and these little codes and these little lifetime agreements and contracts and help both be in the best balanced relationship they can be in with each other and yeah. with life. Absolutely. As the animals are in our lives to teach us what we need to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Our cat or our dog or a hamster, they're there to serve yeah. us and to be of purpose. And yeah. And you know a lot about that. I do. Uh, because my girls were arguably the most mm -hmm. incredible teachers that I've ever known. I mean, they were just brilliant. So for those of you who just tuned in and you're not clear about what's happening, I'm talking to Michelle Jarvis Wanaka, who is the dog psychic. Um, Michelle actually knew my two Jack Russells quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Wilson and Kevin passed away this summer, both of them eight weeks apart, damn near killed me. Um, and there was no doubt that I couldn't have gone through that process without your support and your kindness and your love through all of it. It was, uh, I never thought that I would, in all fairness, I never thought I would need a dog psychic. I never thought, I never yeah, knew. Who does? Who would? <laughs> until you came into my life a few years ago. And, you know, in all fairness, I think that people, you know, when it comes to anything to do with clairvoyancy, people are often very uh, hesitant about. Woo -woo. Yeah. It's about the woo-woo. I love how mm -hmm. you that it is. It's the woo-woo. But in actual fact, if you, as you had so beautifully pointed out already a couple of times, when you put the fear aside and you move towards curiosity, yeah. magic begins to happen. Sure it does. So as you were experiencing this process, was it there one pet or two pets in your own life that just, you know, that they were the teacher for you to push and really give you some uh, validation about what it is that you're doing. Holy moly. Every single one of them. So I generally live with a, share my life with a pack of five dogs seems yes. to be, they're my five guides. They're my five personalities. They're in form and fur, right. And in form and fur right in front of me. Um, yeah. and that's kind of a loaded question because every single one of them is, uh, a teacher. And I, and the, with the psychic intuitive thing, I just want to say it's as normal for everyone to be intuitive as it is the example I use all the time and everybody's had this experience is when you think about one of your friends and they, they phone you or you run into them in the grocery store, like bang, bang. I was just thinking about you, yeah. you know, that as small as that. And like anything with psychic intuition, if you build it like a muscle, you'll build it like a muscle. So you'll be able to use it more and more and more. So anybody that has a little bit of like intuition and feeling about things and have, has noticed things happening in their lives that they've been thinking about or dreaming about or whatever it is, those, those, what we call synchronicities, that's, that's the, my job is the glamorous version of that, right? My, my role in life is to dig deeper and deeper and ask more questions and ask more questions and get to the root of why the person phoned you and how that all worked and, ah, and what, you know, like that's, that's psychic intuition simplified. So going back to the dogs, every animal, horses included, that have come into my life have taught me something. Yeah. And every one of the listeners here, animal, if you sit back and think, what did I learn? What was I going through in that period of my life? Whether I was a child, whether I was a teenager with teenage angst, whether I was in my 20s going through all of that. If you look back at the animals in your life, you'll not notice two things. They show back up in your life, right? You'll be like, wait a second. This was minxy from when I was a kid. Like, I'm, I'm, am I crazy? Like, why do I feel this? Animals come back and you can't avoid it. You, they, ju they just come back into your lives um, with this whole thing we call reincarnation. We give it that word reincarnation, right? And the other one is when you recognize this and you pay attention to your animals, every single one of your animals has a story as well. Yeah. So our first Weimariner, um, she's the one that I wrote the book about and her passing journey, the pain in it and the being the, the heartbreak, the literally feeling my heart hurt and not being able to eat or drink or sleep or be awake or work out or make a decision after she passed all of that angst that anyone who's had an animal pass in their life that is um, precious to you has felt some level again, from zero to 60 of those emotions rights to feeling all of the pain in the world and sometimes not even wanting to live, right? She's the one who taught me that there's 
a part to this. There's a journey to this. It's, it's the grief journey. Yes. There's like a year long period when you recognize something's going on with my dog, cat, horse, whatever it is, bird, um, right through to they've passed. And now you're doing this healing journey. And in the healing journey, when you pay attention, this is what all of my animals have taught me. And every, at different degrees, every one, every animal will teach you things at different degrees because too much too soon, you, your brain can't handle it. Our human brains can't handle it. Mm -hmm. They just can't. But bits and pieces that keep proving themselves. Animals will show you and teach you. This is what I've learned from other side that there is a full relationship that you can have with them when you can't see them. And, and, That's and interesting to me because lately, especially oh. I have, you know, I, I haven't always felt Bobby Wilson and Kevin near me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. with me. I know, I mean, Kevin, Kevin and Bobby Wilson died separately and for different reasons. They, you know, they, they, uh, I really truly believe Michelle after our conversation, uh, that, that Kevin really passed over because of a broken heart. That was her you know, Bobby Wilson was her love child. Yes. And we're so close uh, all the way through, even yes. though they bicker once in a while. But recently, because the grief process, I'm sort of in the acceptance part of that five stage now. Like, it's, nice. I'm no longer in the, uh, you know, the, I can't believe this has happened. Um, and so now I'm starting to feel Bobby Wilson and Kevin around me in different ways, right? In different like, ways. It's not like I see them running across the floor or anything like that, but I get a feeling of comfort when oh, I'm feeling beautiful. down, which is so great, beautiful. right? Beautiful. And I, I wonder with your dog, your I, I can't pronounce it. Where, where I'm Heimer, a Reiner, yeah. Heimer, Heimer. Heimer. What a beautiful, I mean, beautiful dog. And you have two more beautiful dogs uh, in, of the same breed. Yeah. Um, is Charlie or I can't remember the other dog's name. I'm so sorry. I have, I have, Charlie, right? we had Maya come in first and then Charlie Parker come in second who Charlie and Parker um, were internationally famous for their life journey, for their yeah. pain they suffered in the beginning. And they, without a doubt, were my German shepherds that I had in my twenties, without right. a doubt. Like even yeah. people who don't believe in this that are in my life, yeah. friends, family members, cause no, no, I don't expect everybody to believe what I believe, right? Um, they know. Like they know that these animals are the same one. So it's started with um, the German shepherds turn up in Taz in my twenties. And then the month they pass away, Charlie and Parker come in from Kansas, Missouri from living under a bridge and were chosen from 150 people around the world to have them. Yes. I saw that. I was yep. like, God, I had no idea. Oh, it's so incredible. It's, that like, is sometimes really incredible. it's too much for my brain. Sometimes yeah. it's way too much for my brain. And then yeah. Taya and Shin come in after, um, after Shao Wei and Parker pass away, because we had another dog, Shao Wei, that came in from uh, Taiwan through a rescue. And her life journey was about, it was all about being Parker's soulmate. It had, and we could, I could never, as a psychic intuitive, I couldn't tap into who she was. Wow. She was there for Parker and she passed with Parker. The brother and sister didn't pass together this time. Like it's so interesting. And oh, now- did they pass? Like, was it a long distance between, or like you said, they passed together? The brother and sister passed three and a half. So Parker and Charlie, yeah, um, they passed three and a half years ahead of, of between each other. And I had told Turnip and Taz, when they were in passing, I told Turnip, you can go first next time because she hung on way too long. Yeah, yeah. So, and she did. She went first and, and she was the one that I've written the second book about, about called Grieving Gracefully. Yes. Because we have, we're, there's such an invitation in this to grieve gracefully. There's such an invitation to be right alongside of your pet when you know that they're starting to shift and say, I have got your back. I have got your back and I, oh, my head's tingling. I am in this with you, my friend. Yeah. I will not waver. And within that, doing the healing we need to do, going to counseling, getting therapy. I went, did all kinds of things when my dogs were in passing. Um, hypnotherapy was really beneficial for me in order to help them pass without all of my angst about yes. losing them. Yes. Right. And I'm doing air quotes with the losing because when you have loved an animal, when you've loved them in, in without abandon, when you've just let yourself love them, 
You've never lost them. No, no, not at all. You are a millionaire. You're the love millionaire. Like that is in you to have and to hold and to think of and to connect with. And then learning and understanding through this journey, because I've had so many animals and watched and have thousands and thousands of clients all over the world. So I get to talk to people about their experiences as well. There's, I'm like 99% sure that all of this is 100% real, (laughs) that there's the reincarnation, that the animals work with you from the other side. Yeah. And because I do this for a living, I do the psychic work. I'm like, I'm picking up people's grandparents and I'm people picking up the other day. I picked up what the, the, at the girl's front yard looked like, like identical, her fence and everything, yeah. you know, like I'm picking up stuff like really personal, deep stuff that is con- confirming to me every single day that this stuff is real. Yeah. Like I, I can't back out of it, I, although I try, cause it's weird to me still as a human being. I'm like, I mean, and it sounds weird to the untrained ear. So weird. Right. But I, I have to say, Michelle, without, a, without a doubt though, what, I mean, we've, you and I've talked for years about this, mm-hmm. but when Kevin was dying and you showed up at my gate, mm-hmm. unplanned, unplanned, unprepared. And you said, I just had a feeling I had to come over. I just yeah. had to come over. Right. And I'm not a drop by kind of girl. And you're not a drop by. No, girl. I am not. <laughs> but it was you felt that you needed to come and and yeah. and Kevin needed to have a conversation with you. Yes. And the people that were working on your fence were like, are you here to see the dog? I was like, what are you talking about right now? <laughs> it was wild. So I just listened in that day that that intuition that's saying you have to go see Kathy. It's not the list of what's going on. No, no not at all. It was like, just go, just stop it. Stop, drop and roll and go see Kathy. And, and when we start to follow that in life, there is so much magic that we are missing out on. And we are so become so addicted to drama and trauma. But yes. when, we, when we become be curious about the magic and the synchronicities and the divine perfection, it's life is so much better. But you've so also decided better. to take that gift now and start working with people. Right. I understand that you yeah. recently started doing cards, not just for your pet uh, and, and sort of yes. within that and, and receiving those messages for not only the animals, but now that muscle that you have spoken about is yeah. working well for you in doing yeah. cards. How did that come about? Well, with all of these, my, all my animals teaching me all of these different things and all of this different work that I do and all of the animals that come in, it gets really heavy. Yeah, it's really heavy and I can drown a little bit in it and I can get really sad, even though I, I believe all of this beautiful stuff, I can get really sad and I can get really heavy, especially when my friends and family members are animals are in passing. I feel it. Right. And no, so I, I had started a few years ago cause I'm off the charts, clairvoyant, right? Like I've always known since I was a child, like, and especially my teenagers, when you have those packs of friends, I've, I've always been a part of a pack, yeah. um, these packs of friends, like what is best for them? And I could always see five things that were best for somebody. Like you could go, you could do this or do that, or do this or do that, or you could do this. Like, it's your choice. Just choose one of these things. So it was always obvious to me, but I shut it down because it's too much information. It's none of my business. It's none of my business, what people should be doing with their lives, unless they ask me. Right. And of course that's got me into trouble in the past by offering information. And people are like, I don't want to know, like get lost. I'm like, okay. So the card I thing. I also relate to that. I truly do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people uh, yeah. don't always want our, in, in the best and kindness of intentions, they just really yes. don't always want our feedback, do they? No, they don't. Yeah. No. And I've That's also okay. learned that we can, when we can see in, like with your intuition as well, when we can see into other people's stuff, we're messing with their time clock. Yeah. Right. We're messing with their own life agenda. So if you speed someone up, it can really throw them off track. They have to find things themselves. Yeah, right. That's and that's half the fun of life is when you look back as the people that you found and the journey and all of these things. So I had done some cards for some friends of mine. Like I've always had a stack of cards or a deck of cards and they have kept me sane. They've kept me married. They've kept me alive. They've kept me from, you know, those moments where I'm just like, I'm just going to drive my yellow forerunner off of a cliff. Like I can get pretty dramatic, like, cause I'm, you know, I have five personalities, right. Of all this emotional stuff going on. Yeah. So when I bring all of those into alignment and don't let them all go all over the place, I become this super cool conduit for information. So in doing cards for my friends, I literally was like, this is the funnest thing I've ever done in my life. 
I <laughs> more want fun more of this yeah. because I wasn't having fun. Like my job is so rewarding doing the grief work and the, the animal communication, but it's heavy. And it's like every session is like running a little bit of a marathon. I'm, I'm quite an athlete with it, but I needed some fun in the job piece. And let's face it, we get to choose in life um, what we inject into our life. Happy, sad, mad, glad, you know. So I needed to inject some joy in there. So doing cards and then saying to the universe, I want to do this. When you say to the universe, I want to do this, it's super fun and it's of service and it's helping people, the doors just open, like stuff just opens. They absolutely do. So I just started throwing it up online. And of course, all my friends and all my past clients that trust me, they all showed up, like hundreds and hundreds of them all showed up. So I also got to see how this works with people I actually know. Yeah. When I'd be pulling cards, I'm like, woohoo! Whoa, wait till you see, like I lose my marbles when I read cards for people because I have most of them I know, yeah. right? So, so it's, it's wonderful fun. to see the accuracy in that, right? Like, you know, I, I, it's, wow. I, there are a lot of people that are very skeptical about cards and, you know, it's been my experience that cards have been very good at helping to guide you, especially if you're on the fence about something right? Especially if when you're on the fence, you know, and just having somebody from the outside looking in mirroring to you, what you probably already know anyway. Yeah. Right. There's a power in having a witness, but there's power in having a witness. Absolutely. Huge. So can you share with us like one of your favorite, uh, well, first of all, do you have a favorite deck that you like to use or, you know, it doesn't matter to you or do you have, you know, and, and do you have one that was a particularly low moment of a really yeah. foundational, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I do you know, know what you understand mean. my question. Yes. I have two and they're, they revolve around horses. And when I was working with this, um, horse whisperer from France who I'd met at a farm here in town and he was just leaving to go on at because he in the summer times he's this horse whisperer and in the winter time he's a he goes on the sea shepherd I'm like okay this is a human being of all human beings Mm -hmm. so I did a reading for him before he left and the card he chose the last card he chose when I was doing this reading for him was this big white horse that said wisdom across it Oh my God. And the card is like, you, I always say, you know, when people pick it, I'm like, you're full of whiz, man. Look at you're full of whiz. (laughs) But like when the wisdom card comes up, I know that that person throughout their lifetimes has just held an innate wisdom. And when I showed up in his life, I I said, I hope you know Mm -hmm. who you are because I'm standing here watching it and you are not like other people. You are not like other people. So having the blessing of reading for this this amazing Jesus-like human being was a game changer for me. And then I was doing a reading. I do a reading for this beautiful soul who um, buys wild stallion or not wild stallions, sorry, wild uh, Mustangs, wild Mustangs. So she goes to these auctions and um, picks out horses that can be working horses for people for the future um, and gets them trained and everything. So I was doing this reading for her on all these different horses. And I'm like, there's this big white one just it's a beautiful horse. I'm like, this is, this is it. This wild horse is going to be, it's going to do whatever you want. He's just going to be like, all right. Like, it's like going to be like your pet <laughs> poodle. Like it's just going to be the best horse ever. So, and then I'm, I'm doing the cards and it flew right out of the deck, right on the camera as I'm recording it flew right out of the deck. And I'm like, Oh, what's that? And I pick it up and I just started to cry because it was the image on this card of this horse Whoa! caramely creamy color whitish horse with this big mane and that was Colette Baron Reed's deck and I I cried because of the synchronicity because this I'm a normal human being doing this and I doubt as well so when I get a and I always do I always get like three four five moments where I'm like that's why you pay the big bucks people to come and see me (laughs) like I I laugh and have fun right because I learned I freaking love it. It's so much fun being a yes. part of people's evolution. Yes. Of their, their unfolding of themselves and cards do that. They, they really do, do that. So knowing what they've done for me and then being able to share that with other people and be a part of the ride. Oh my God. Like 
no yeah, matter what the pun on that when it's coming to the horses it's like enjoy the ride yeah 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 sharing the ride it's so yeah. fun and yeah. and we're so skeptical of this kind of stuff or we really are or we like i went to a tarot card reader or i went to an oracle reader i went to a psychic like why are we whispering about this we should be saying oh i got a reading from somebody it was so awesome because it's so, I see people, their whole motivational perspective is completely shifted when they get a card reading. And of course I go crazy with it. So like, I'm like Tony Robbins of like reading. So I'm like, go, do it, do it, let's go. If you follow this information, da, 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 da. Yeah. right. And I see it. Well, you I find that people are more open to it now than they've ever been. Haven't you noticed a real change? Even especially now with, I mean, I hate to say that we're still in COVID, but unfortunately, you know, it's going to be with us for a while. Yeah. People are looking for solutions. They're looking for, like I, I, what I've noticed lately, and I, I don't ever like to put the poo-poo on something, you know me, but, yeah. I, but at the end of the day, I really noticed that there's a lot of negativity going around for people. And I don't know Ooh. whether it's because of COVID or, you know, like what's up with that. Yeah. Uh, well, how is that manifesting in the readings that you're gifting to people? Uh, what I'm seeing Kathy is pure motivation to live without any words of anything around you, like any uh, of the negative words, we illness, disease, stress. Yeah. Um, I, I hear combat in my mind, like all the things that we're in such a state of fight, fight about. I see people at the end of it. Cause I always ask, how do you feel right now? Yeah. You're just like, I feel lighter. And I feel like I can see things with, from a different point of view. Yeah. And I feel like I have hope and I'm like, Oh, Oh, hope. Yeah. No, we all just need hope. And this yeah. is what the cards have done for me. Yeah. Like I said, they've kept me sane. They've kept me moving forward. So, yeah. you know, whether you buy yourself a deck of cards from somewhere or whether you get readings and you, as you a psychic intuitive, you, you we don't need, need to know how to read the cards right off the top because so yeah. many of the decks, especially, you know, some of the ones that you mentioned, the Colleen Barrett uh, line. They, Col uh, Colette Baron reed yeah. Co Colette Baron reed they, they all have little books that go with them. So you yeah. can actually theoretically pick a card for yourself <laughs> yeah. and, and feel comfortable. You know, yes, it's better if you go and see someone for sure, or talk with someone like yourself. Well, we have our and own limitations too. We all, right? yeah, you put a card and you're like, what? What yeah. does that mean? I don't feel yeah. like I just pulled us for us an abundance card from an Udi deck. And mm -hmm. we're like, well, I'm not feeling very abundant right now. But if you stop and look at your life, like, holy cow. Are you kidding? So I feel abundant. totally abundant. Oh, I just spend you. the time with you. Are you kidding? Oh. Our, <gasps> listeners, so our <laughs> listeners get to hear what it is you have to say. And speaking of listeners, if you have just tuned in, it's probably a good idea that I tell people who they're listening to. And also, to, this is a great time for people to get a piece of paper to pen because they're going to want to get your information to share. Yeah. So just, you know, at the end of the day, I would recommend if you're listening, please pull over to the side of the road in a little bit pull over. Make sure you've got a paper and a pencil you can get michelle's information on how you can find her you are listening to chly 101.7 fm in beautiful downtown nanaimo of course our radio program goes all the way from duncan to oh i would say about middle of campbell river and then shoots across to the sunshine coast so if you are listening today thank you so very much for tuning in if you're also listening to us on uh, youtube uh welcome please like and subscribe and share 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 particularly you'll want to share Michelle Jarvis Wanaka, who is our fabulous guest today on Act Three. <sighs> I just uh. love having her here too. It's <laughs> so great to have you with the program. So I do feel abundant, and I feel abundant every time that I get to spend some time with you. And I hope our listeners feel the same. I hear you. And what the unabundance is, or the opposite of abundance is, is when we're in our own minds all by ourselves, and we go into those places where we have lack of abundance, right? Like, because yes. we're, we're, as human beings, we're always kind of wanting more and wanting change yeah. and wanting growth and wanting, you know, the million dollar. Well, now it's, you know, million dollars is bazillion dollars, right? The way that um, money is, we, we all tend to want more. So when you think of abundance, yeah, we have to sit back and, and think, okay, I'm warm, I'm fed, I'm, I'm loved, I'm, you know, you have to go right from the, the from the base, 
right? From the very, very oh, base. Heavens, yeah. Of abundance you know, especially and especially now, especially now with so many people that have really had some, some really crappy things happen yeah. to them in the last while, you know, I, you know, some people have lost their homes over COVID. They've lost their yeah. jobs, their livelihood. Like, you know, we are, and we live in Canada, which in itself is abundant. So there's lots of reasons oh, to yeah. gratitude. Lots take of stock things. of what you've got. That's what I just heard in my head. Take stock of what you've got. Take yeah. stock of what you've got. Yeah. Take and whatever that got. is, it's yours. Yeah. Like whatever it is, it's yours. And just, and, and the more that you um, feel ab that abundance and, and remind yourself of, of the abundance, the more life brings to you. It's just the yeah. way it works. That's just, that's quantum physics and science. It's not all spirituality and woo woo. But no, no, no. There's some fat real it. life. Real. Yeah. And, and, and I'm the telling energy you, you put out changed. there is the energy you will receive in, in turn. So, you know, yes. what, I where? Think that there's a, a famous line somewhere that talks about, you know, what you focus on, that's where you'll be. Right. Yeah. So if you're focusing on the, yeah. on the harshness, then that's how you're going to, you know, see the world to be. Be careful because, and then that causes in turn illness and disease. And that's Absolutely. just science as well. It's not me being all spiritual. That's just, you know, and I studied holistic wellness for 11 years as well and worked in the holistic field and have studied animal wellness and all of these different things. So I have these, you know, the, 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 if you imagine a clock with all the numbers, I have, I, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm not just coming from my basement and um, lighting a candle and reading cards for Absolutely. people reading their, or, or, you know, picking information out of a hat about what's going on with their pets. Yeah, no, no, and I absolutely. know that the people that come to me to do work, I know without a doubt that they're on a very particular mission in their life Yeah, for sure. of awareness and, yeah. and, 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 and in inviting more into their lives. Yeah. yeah. Right. So those are the kind of people I attract as well. So, you know, if you're one of those people, it is safe. It is safe for you to come and work with me. And on that note, um, I I'm under animal psychic.ca and dog psychic.com like i have a few different titles yeah i noticed that there's a new there's a new contact information in town as far as animal psychic yeah and i, well, I, I do think that you changed that because you really do more than just dogs like you I, I you love really, working with cats and yeah, horses. yeah. Oh, what what a huge divine like i aspire to have a cat one day like they're just such they're so evolved. Like if you actually take a moment and look in a cat's eyes, you can't not think, wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's just something there, right? Well, and, and they've I'm always been um, they've always been atoned to um to spirituality and to early yeah. Egyptian philosophy and you know there's a time Greek philosophy as well there's tons of stuff that has to do with cats uh, that are out there I just think that I love how cats can be so they can be fickle because they're their individual personality but they are so loving when they want to love you up you feel it through your bones yeah they just bring in a higher vibration of healing Yes. Right. Absolutely. Higher vibration of healing when animal dogs bring in a higher level of love yeah. for yourself. They're like sure. they're walking up your heart and horses bring in this higher level of awareness of the world around you. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. just like, they, they all have something to offer. And I feel that in this time in our lives, the animals are able to um, make the most productive mm, time of their time on earth like because people are noticing like you know you post anything horrible on facebook not that i do that but you we see in social media all of these horrible stories these sad stories the animals i feel are lending themselves to this awareness of of loving kindness yeah and choices about how we eat how we live how we you know treat animals how we treat others how we treat ourselves yeah and i in in my view um when we see how people are with their animals, I, I think the thing that bothers me when I'm watching some of the stuff on social media is the abusiveness that people can be to their pets. And I don't understand it. I just really don't understand it. They're so, 
um, in, for the most part, people, nor, like regular normal people love their pets, right? When they lose their pet, they grieve deeply. Deeply. Um, but I've always believed, I, and, I, and it's a little bit of a segue, but I, I've, I've always believed that if a, if a dog doesn't like somebody, there's a reason. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if a dog distances themselves for a reason. Um, and I don't, I don't really understand how people can hurt an animal at best. Uh, it's because they're hurting themselves. They are hurting yeah. so deeply inside and that yeah. has to come out somewhere. And here these animals in our lives are, again, bringing awareness to the choices in that. Yeah, for sure. You know, for, for either whoever's witnessing it that can bring it up and say, this is not right. Or for the person themselves to be yeah. like, this makes me feel worse, you know, and animals, that's what I see over and over again is that they're bringing themselves to the table to, 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 yeah. to, to this where we can see them with our eyeballs yeah. and with all of these things that are happening to them and and we can make a change through our our voice and our actions and and the awareness where when you know millions of people are saying this isn't right and the people that are you know doing the negative stuff are like what this isn't right what are you talking about it's just an animal well that's not true and yeah. then 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 perhaps those people can start to see things through other people's eyes because if we couldn't see things through other people's eyes we would all be feral. Yeah, it's very true. We are seeing things through our mother and father's eyes as we're growing up through our teacher's eyes, through the kids around us eyes. And that's what makes us not feral. Yeah. But if, if the people that are um, harming these animals haven't had the same loving kindness and awareness, yeah. and then they're harming animals and then the rest of the world's standing up and saying, wait a second, we need to be kind. That's where that awareness comes to those people of like, wait a second, what are you talking about? I have to be yeah. kind? What's that yeah. look like? And then- they have their own pet and they're like, I didn't know that I could love a pet this way. Yes. I had no idea I could love like this. And then their heart starts to open up to other things. So animals are like lending themselves to negative experiences and positive experiences as these, as a divine, a divine sentient being or angel would, if you could imagine that. Well, I, I think so many people really do believe that pets are angels on earth without wings. That's all. Sentient beings in a fursuit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I certainly know with Bobby and Kevin, or, uh, Bobby Wilson and Kevin, that you know, they, they taught me patience, loyalty, love, you know, uh, they helped create balance in some yeah. types of unbalanced time. And I won't deny it's been a, it's been a little while now. And I still miss them every single day. I just oh. I come home looking for their bar. I mean, in all fairness, I have become a full-fledged uh, volunteer for Elder Dog. I'm very mm. excited about having my first posting on that. And I will be looking after, one of my friends is going out of town and I'll be uh, looking after Chihuahua for a little while. So I'm really excited about Aww. having this new little life around. Hey, but, remind know, me of that Elder Dog again. Remind me of that. Yeah, so El, what Elder Dog is, I, and there is a pod uh, on all over Vancouver Island, there are pods, P-A-W-D, uh, oh. as in pods, <clears throat> and Elder Dog is a, is a Canada-wide organization that is designed to help older adults look after their pets when the older adults can't any longer. So part of it is walking the dog, so there's always they're always looking for volunteers, uh, who they do a rigorous process with to ensure that they have a volunteer that will truly look after your pet. Uh, but they will take the dog for a walk. They will pick up the food. They will purchase the food, you know, and bring it home. They might look after, <clears throat> excuse me, they may look after um, the pet while mom and dad or, you know, like mom and dad of the dog or cat um, is having to go to, to a medical appointment for uh, a, a short stay at the hospital, something like that. They mm. foster the cat or a longer stay if they have to go into, uh, into care. Uh, elder dog will, you know, find a volunteer that will basically a person like myself mm -hmm. who will look after the dog until a new home is found for that. Wow. Dog, right. So okay. fostering opportunities and things like that. What that I beautiful. love about it is it means that older adults who often lose mm -hmm. the things that they need because their families tell them that they can't look after them anymore. But really what they need is their pet to love them when they're That's like, exactly what they need. with them. Yeah. They just need somebody to, to, to bridge that small thing of getting the dog back and forth for the walk, 
feeding the dog, perhaps picking up the food, managing some small things so that the dog can live with their owner for as long as absolutely possible. Whoever thought of that needs to be held up high on a chair and like march through the city with everybody cheering them. Like that is beautiful. I'm going to volunteer for that. You must, it is the greatest. Yeah, I I could feel it. It's it's something that I've been looking for that is doable in my life, my busy life and of service um with dogs and elders like that's that's it, that's pretty it beautiful get better if you wanted it to be no I, you really I can't. will definitely offline I will hook you up if you want to know more information to our listeners I will also put a link in the chat box regarding elder dog, as well as the links for your uh for how people can reach you as well Michelle uh but yes. without a doubt they are it's an amazing organization www.elderdog dot ca that's www dot elder dog dot ca yeah uh and of course you know fill out the application you'll have to get a criminal record check as everyone does for any kind of volunteer goodness vulnerable adult exactly (laughs) thank goodness right doesn't take any time i got mine mine was you know usually it's two or three days to get your crim check back mine was given back in five minutes so oh, nice it's really easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, kathy holmes, yeah, yeah. Kathy she's, holmes she's okay we'll keep her. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah so so definitely do that and if it's something in your power michelle i i am confident they will be delighted to have some oh yeah yeah like yeah I think I feel that it's exactly what I've been looking for that I didn't realize I was looking for, but I could feel it floating around in my vibration. So, so thanks. And, you know, and that's the way life works when you're paying attention, right? Oh gosh. Yes. It's exactly how life works when you're paying attention. I want to, I'm going to change the subject a little bit uh, because again, you know, there's a lot of things that Michelle Jarvis Wanaka does. If you just tuned into act three, Um, but there's one thing that I'm just loving because you are doing your own podcasts with tequila talks, tequila and tea talks. Tequila and tea talks. I think maybe our audience would like to know a little bit more about that. It's brilliant because I get to have these amazing conversations with people all over the world. Um, these really deep conversations, not yeah. just these surface level conversations. Um, I recognize that there's this need for people to talk about uh, what they know to be true in life. Like literally, what do you like? Who asks you that when you're in a social setting or like you're out for lunch with somebody? Like, hey, so Kathy, how you doing today? Da, da, da. Um, so, like, what do you know to be true? What's going on for you? Exactly. Like we just don't ask those kind of questions. So the the questions are that's what it's based on is me talking to these really cool, intuitive women who have come from all walks of life that all have this the sixth sense that they're working with and that have this passion and joie de vivre. And even if they were terrified of using the sixth sense, they're in that point of their life now where they just they have to. They just have to. And it's about what they know to be true about life and, and fears and blocks. And there's a lot of stuff about anxiety, a yes. lot and how people navigate. And a lot of the people I've worked with have post-traumatic stress. And they say to me, I don't know if I can do it, Michelle. I don't know. And I'm like, it's just like talking to me right now. There's no difference. Exactly. I'm just going to have a conversation. Yeah. Be asking you more questions yeah. about stuff that I'm actually curious about. And here I get an opportunity to. So it's been this win-win thing where literally I've had people post, like I post it on the people's own page afterwards and on Tequila and Tea Talks page and then on, on my Michelle Jarvis Wanacott page. I post it and people are, are, the fans and family members are coming through and posting and saying, I didn't know that about my family member. I didn't know that about my sister, my brother, my mom. I didn't know that about my mom because we don't have these conversations, right? We, we get so we sidetracked should. by all the outside of the things that we're not talking about this inside things. And I love the inside stuff, right? So sometimes tequila makes a nice little buffer and that's, she's my girl. So if I'm going to have a a, a sip of something with somebody, it's going to be a little, I'm going to have a little tequila. And and I found that it goes really nicely in tea. So we have this, and that's what we do as women. We get together and we have a glass of wine or we have some tea or we meet at a coffee shop or it's what we do. So to be able to have, this little drink and I my personality is a little tequila and tea like I have to watch my mouth because I'm a little f balmy I'm pretty passionate about life and but also at the same time I'm like talking to God half the day as well so it's tequila and tea it's it's about these conversations that are hot and cold and deep and light and happy sad 
you know, all it's, the colors that we can be. It's today's version of a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. Right? Thanks. You're a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. So what, when you're talking Fun. to people, you know, I, I find for myself, when you're curious, like we've spoken about already, mm -hmm. when you're curious, things just sort of pop up, right? You turn things around and shift it. Is, has there been themes that have been coming up for you lately? And if so, what might those themes look like? In the talk, it's anxiety. Yeah. All right. It's in the talks. There are a lot about anxiety and a lot about how people navigate it and how they deal with it themselves, like what they have to do for them, whether it be yeah. from medication to meditation. Hey, that's a good one. Medication to meditation. There's a that's a t-shirt there in itself, right? <laughs> oh, I gotta write that down. You are you're a very spiritual woman on so many levels. Off the right? charts. Uh, you know, this is, you know, this connection is just beautiful. Um and and uh, some people are really uh abundant with that and they are so they surround themselves with like-minded people because they just flow to them when it comes to this place. Mm -hmm. Uh, who are some of your favorite mentors? Oh, um, right off the bat, Louise Hay. She's why I exist. I have mantras of from her. Everything in my world is perfect, whole, and complete, tattooed on my arm. Louise Hay, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think Wayne Dyer, because he's such a beautiful prophet. Such mm -hmm. a beautiful prophet. Um, you know, those are the two real, like I have a lot and I've taken hundreds of courses with, you know, like different peoples around the world. Dr. Brian Weiss. Oh my gosh. You know, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden. I like the, I like to bridge the gap between science and spirituality. Of course. And, and, and so people that are doing that, like Greg Braden. Um, and at this point in my life, I, I'm, I'm mostly at 55 listening to my own guides. Yes. Listening to my working with what comes through when I ask, what do I need to know right now? Lead me, guide me, show me the way. What do I need to know right now? Lead me, guide me, show me the way. So I've become my own mentor also with sitting down when I'm stuck, pulling some cards and or um, writing, like writing out my anger, writing out my angst, writing out my frustration. So, and, and in the tequila and tea talks, this is a lot of the things that people talk about as well as the people that have the, the people that have motivated them or the books or the education or whatever it is that's motivated them to get out of the darkness and 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 live life the roller coaster of life right yeah. and when i said i'm off the chart spiritual i'm also off the charts human and i mess things up all of the time in my own personal life yeah. with like communicating incorrectly or whatever it is because this is this is so tricky nowadays to communicate effectively because we all hear through different filters, right? So it's we also get an opportunity to talk about what it looks like navigating relationship and friendships and family ships and all of these different things, right? We get an opportunity to to talk about those kind of things and what has helped. So you know, and and like your question, like who's your Who's kind of your role model? Well, Louise Hay was the biggest one. And then it's become um, myself because I've had hundreds. I could just sit here and like, like give you a list of all of the people that through my own darkness and my own depression and my own angst and my own, I'll just say darkness. Um, I've been led to all of these different people along the lines, yourself included, where you, you go to somebody for information or support and you come out with this whole new bag of tools. Yes. Right? Yes. So for, for people to, to learn that reaching out, whether you're reaching out to um, a psychic intuitive or whether you're reaching out to um, a person with 75 degrees in psychiatry or psychotherapy or whatever, reaching out the journey itself says, I love myself enough to take care of myself. So I'm gonna reach out. And then in that journey, one sentence can change your whole entire life from us from a person one yes. sentence yes right? it can be the catalyst so i have hundreds of people that have been that catalyst for me to be able to do the work i do today and to be able to exist in this world because for me it has not been um comfortable yeah. up until i really started to walk this walk and and um work with animals follow my passion
And a lot of people are afraid to reach out because they find it to be a weakness, yet it's absolutely opposite. It's an incredible strength to reach out. And you don't have to necessarily reach out to, I, to you know, counseling, although that might be beneficial. You know, it's not about reaching out to, um, to these higher levels. It's about reaching into yourself to ask yourself what it is that you need and let that be, you know, a guide that comes through. Um, and there are a lot yourself. of people, right? We have to reach in because once you reach in, then you can see in and then you can, you know, the people say that we have all the answers inside of ourselves. We just need to look, right? But I say you know, three deep breaths, three to five deep breaths. We know the answers. That's true. We know but, it. But it's even better when we can be supported by the universe and the uh, around us, right? It's that yes. tribe, for lack of better words, that brings us together, the people that come yes. in and through and... You know, I, I, I'm a different person than I was when I was 20 and 30 and 40 oh. and 50 and now pushing 60. Mm -hmm. I'm just not the same person as I once was. So the people that come in and out of my life now are reflective of that. And they're also, some of them are friends for 40 years that are going through the changes themselves. And they're mm -hmm. starting to realize their own wisdom and tune into it. And then they share that wisdom. You know, I think I it's meant to be shared, don't you? It's uh, why we exist. It's why we exist. Yeah. One of the reasons why we exist is to share information. In Chinese medicine philosophy, they say, you know, we're born, we're all born with a gift, and if we don't use it, it'll be taken away from us. Like it's because yeah. we're it's, we're supposed to be using it. We're supposed to be utilizing. It. We're supposed to be supporting each other with information about how, you know, this made my life easier. Yeah. Because it's life is a roller coaster. It, it it's for everybody. You know, yeah, yeah, nobody no gets matter whether you live in a big it. shiny yeah. house or a trailer, like, yeah, it makes no difference. It's a roller coaster, man. Yeah. yeah so sure. to, to, to have these, this support, I just think never stop on yourself, like keep, yeah. keep moving forward and recognize that every person and every animal that shows up in your life, even if it's a, we had a window full of ladybugs this year. I love ladybugs and this, I love all ladybugs. these, oh, well, we had like all these babies in my bedroom, in our bedroom window. And I was like, oh. I need to oh, save them all. And I'm like, no, I don't. So yeah. even these little dudes showing up reminded me that I don't have to hop into action for everything that shows up. This uh, other beings, other people, other animals, they also have their role in life, their journey, their blueprint, their path. And not everybody needs to be saved. But if you can offer a little bit of support. So I put like some flowers in there and some greenery <laughs> for them to eat and spritz it with water once in a while and knocked out the, um, put knocked out the, um, the, what's right. it called that? the screen, knocked out the screen. So the ones that wanted to get out could get out. Yeah. Right. And I just had to trust that these little beings could do it on their own. They didn't need me to sweep in and help to save them. So I'm trusting the ladybugs because the ladybugs are are spiritual beings who are here for us to bring us good wishes. At least that was the childhood thing that I had. Right. If a if a ladybug landed on you, it was good luck always, always. Yeah, and, and and remind yourself that to just stop when an animal shows up and ask, "What am I supposed to hear or learn right now?" Just ask yourself. And just the the time it takes to take a breath and look and be in awe of such a wonderful creature in itself. I mean, really. That's perfect. Yeah. Takes you right out of that blah in life and right off. back into your body. Yeah. Right back into your body. That's brilliant. Speaking about getting back into our body, our show is just about to end and I don't okay. get to end without how we, you know, you know how I love to end things. So uh, there will be a life lesson. I'm looking forward to hearing your take on that. But before that happens, could you please tell our listeners how they can reach Michelle? Okay, where I'm the most active is uh, Michelle Jarvis Wanacott, Michelle with one L, Jarvis, J-A-R-V-I-S, and a little hyphen in there, and then W-O-N-N-A-C-O-T-T, -T. but if I were being professional, which I always forget to be, it's animalpsychic.ca, www.animalpsychic.ca. If you happen to put in the dog psychic, you might find me as well. <laughs> um, the dead giveaway is all the Weimariner pictures on my pages and my big old Wolford ski dog. Yes. So, yes. I love that. Dog. Oh my God. And goodness. I have a pet loss grieving gracefully Facebook page. 
pet loss, grieving gracefully. So that's where people who have, are in that state of loss and that place of loss can come and get support from all kinds of amazing people of all walks of life. And yeah. there's got to be, there's got to be a hundred healers and, and psychics and teachers on there, like just all offering love and support and light. No one will ever know who they are. Like, it's really cool. So I'm, I'm in a lot of places, but animal psychic.ca is the best place to find me for um, the professional information. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'm sure that our listeners are going to reach out. And if you are watching this on our YouTube station, you will find the links down below. And again, thank you for tuning in. We're super, super glad that you did. Michelle, what's our life lesson? What's our takeaway for the day? Animals come into our lives to teach us with the lessons we need to learn and we need to replace fear in life with, with uh, curiosity. Yeah. Like ask your animal, pay attention. And there's no loss. There's only gain when we've shared our life with an animal. So yeah. it's gain, gain, gain. And we're just handing them back to God when they pass. And those little bugs, they come right back anyways. Yeah. And I think right back. Is, and when we are grieving, it's about us. It's not about the animal. The animal is already pain-free and peace-free. Yes. Right? Already. I mean, I, when Kevin and Bobby Wilson died, I knew that they were already in heaven. It was me that was grieving. It was because I was missing them big time and still do every single day. You thanks grieved with you. grace. You grieved and, with grace. Well, thanks to you for, for um, supporting me in that journey because it was a tough, tough road. And I encourage mm -hmm. people to call you, to write you, to get in touch in whatever way they can uh, to ensure that they are grieving gracefully because, and, and to have the permission to do so because it really oh. is a beautiful, a beautiful permission gift. too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, my darling, for being on the show today. Super, super glad Thank you were you. here. And I look forward, of course, to having you uh, on another program coming up in the future as I might do. So ladies and gents, that's us for this episode of Act 3. Super glad, like I said, that you came by and really looking forward to the next time we're together, which of course is every Monday at one o'clock. You can also watch us on Act 3 on Shaw Cable 4. Uh, I'm super excited to have our next episode is almost ready to go up. That'll be episode mm. four. Hope you've had Yay. a good time with the first three. And of course, uh, we are always looking forward to seeing you and hearing you here on CHLY 101.7 FM. So thanks again everybody and have a terrific day bye for now namaste namaste